Chatter. It's the bane of every machinist workflow. Whether you're roughing with an indexable cutter or finishing with a solid round tool, tackling vibration is critical to success. Exactly. And while the root causes between the two might overlap, the solutions often differ. Today, we're going to dive into the strategies to reduce chatter with both indexable and solid round tooling. Hi, I'm Justin Wilkes, Technical Sales Engineer with Kyocera. I help machinists overcome challenges and improve performance. Hi, my name's Andy Greaves, and I'm the East Coast Applications Engineer for Kyocera SGS. I focus on optimizing processes and solving machining problems. Chatter happens when cutting forces, for a variety of reasons, induce vibration into the tool or machine. These vibrations can lead to a litany of issues, including poor surface finish, yep. reduced tool life, damage to the workpiece, and numerous other challenges. A solid setup is key. If the machine, the fixture, or the part isn't set up and stable, the vibration is only gonna get worse. Loose or weak fixturing lets the parts move around, making chatter even harder to control. So let's talk a little bit about chatter in indexable tools. Uh, chatter can happen with indexable tooling when the inserts don't cut continuously. Uh, so the inserts come in and out of the cut and that stopping and starting action can, can increase vibration. Also, if the inserts don't engage evenly or the lead angle is too steep, uh, that can also cause the tool to bounce a little bit. And it's similar in solid round tooling. A continuous cutting edge can help reduce the chatter, but it's not totally immune to it. Too much tool deflection or the wrong flute geometry can cause tool instability, which will lead to chatter. And when slotting, this can cause issues with chips packing, chips getting recut, and this can throw off the cut if the flutes aren't properly designed to clear them efficiently. All that being said, both indexable and solid round tooling face similar issues. They also require thorough understanding of each tool type, though, to implement the best solutions. Yes, yes. And as we discussed in reducing chatter, we'll begin with the strategies shared between both indexable and solid round tooling. So one of those strategies is feed rate adjustment. A higher feed rate keeps the chip load steady, helping to cut down on that vibration. Running too slow can cause rubbing, making chatter worse. Also dialing in the right feed per tooth, the right chip load helps avoid hitting resonance points and developing harmonic vibrations. Right. And a huge part of that is spindle speeds. Often if you come across chatter, tweaking the RPM slightly just by five or 10% can help reduce those harmonics that are causing that chatter. Oftentimes people slow down, more often than not speeding up can be advantageous too. Another tactic is radial engagement, being aware of the radial engagement of your cutting tool. Uh, smaller step overs naturally reduce side forces and help stabilize the cut. Also sometimes increasing radial engagement at the same time can actually improve stability. It just depends on the setup. Good starting point obviously depends on the cutting tool in the application is let's say 20 to 30 percent but adjust as needed. Every situation is yep. a little different. One example in deep pockets uh, using less radial engagement with an optimized tool path right, uh, can help keep cutting vibration under control. Another option to help control chatter is the use of effective coolant delivery. Although coolant delivery isn't going to affect the tool directly in the, in the way it forms the chip, it's going to help those chips be evacuated and stop them getting recut. It'll help the tool be controlled thermally as well, which can help prevent the tools breaking down, becoming chipped, and therefore causing thermal issues with both the tool and the material, depending on that workpiece. One benefit of, of coolant, or one aspect of it, is the correct application of it, whether it's flood or through coolant. Yeah. Some through coolant benefits, let's talk about those for indexable tools. So flood coolant works fine in most cases. Not every machine might have the capability of through spin. Absolutely. Yeah. But some inserts and holders support through coolant for better chip evacuation, which is especially useful in deep drilling and tough materials. Always better when you can get the coolant closer to the point of cut. For solid round tools, through coolant flushes chips out and helps keep the cut stable, which makes a big difference in deep pockets and high-speed machining. The higher the coolant pressure, the better it gets. So high pressure coolant, let's say a thousand PSI and above, while it isn't always necessary, but in deep hole drilling, let's say five times D or more, it can help clear chips and prevent tool deflection. Let's talk a bit about the setup in terms of the tool, the way it's organized and arranged. So let's talk about overhang and therefore the rigidity of the tool. Sure. The longer the tool stick out, the more it's gonna be prone to vibrating. 
Reducing the stick out by up to 20% can reduce deflection by around 50%, which makes a huge difference in stability while in cut. Another important consideration in all of this is the material. No two different types of materials or alloys or material families are gonna cut alike. Absolutely. Right? It's a big variable. Harder materials like titanium and stainless steel are more prone to chatter due to work hardening and poor heat dissipation, while softer materials like aluminum often do better with higher helix angles, which can improve chip flow and reduce vibration. And sticking with the tool geometry, we can talk about wiper flats for the surface finish. Mm -hmm. So found on both indexable and solid tools, they help smooth out the chatter through revised tool geometry to improve the surface finish. Great for refining the floor finish, especially when pocketing or slotting. They don't help prevent chatter, but they do help reduce the effect of it, giving a better final part finish. Another important consideration, at least in the indexable world, is chip breaker geometry. Uh, positive rake inserts uh, can reduce cutting forces and improve stability. They tend to give a little bit more geometry, more similar to like the solid round tool right. or the ground tool. Yeah. 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 Uh, whereas a tighter radius chip breaker or tighter radius insert can help control chip flow just a little bit differently, uh, but they also happen to weaken the cutting edge too, so it's important to consider. It's all about There's always a given. Yeah. And speaking of the balance between the tool geometry and its application is the lead angles and number of flutes that you use in cut. So a small lead angle helps spread that cutting floor out more evenly, reducing deflection, and fewer flutes reduce the cutting pressure, but too few can make the cutting choppy and cause vibration in harder materials. Another important consideration, whether it be with solid round tools or indexables, is tool diameter. Doubling tool diameter can increase rigidity up to 16 times, and vibration dampening tool holders, when used with indexable tooling, help stabilize the cutting, but not available in all cases as an option. Right, yeah. One thing to focus on as well is the programming strategy, whether you're doing a traditional cut or a high efficiency milling style application. The use of low radial engagement with a higher axial depth of cut can help reduce cutting pressure, distributing the wear more evenly across multiple flutes or inserts. This can help avoid chatter by being stable in cut, maintaining constant cutter engagement, preventing uh, sudden spikes in cutting force when entering a corner, for example. This works best with cutters designed specifically for chip thinning, which allow for lower radial step overs. Generally, these include higher flute counts as well. And, and how does that concept apply to indexable insert technology? The best way to improve stability and reduce chatter is by selecting the correct insert for the job, the material, and the application. And there's a lot that goes into that. Absolutely, yeah. Look for inserts with the right chip breaker geometry, rake angle, and coating depending on the application. These features directly impact the cutting forces, chip control, and tool life. Inserts designed for a specific material, whether that be steel, stainless steel, aluminum, or heat-resistant superalloys, have already been optimized with edge prep built into them. And when would you want to modify that edge prep? When would you want to make a change in that situation? Uh, this should be a last resort option. Yeah. If an insert with the right grade, the geometry, and the coating isn't available, sometimes modifying the edge prep or going to a little bit of a specialty situation may help fine tune that performance. Things like edge honing, chamfering, uh, polishing can help reduce chipping and improve stability, but removing coatings in the process can, of course, shorten the tool, so it's a give and take. Sometimes altering the cutting edge can help affect the cutting forces and the tool performance, sometimes for the better, but it can also compromise the coatings in the process, leading right. to faster wear. So again, give and take. Before modifying an insert, first try adjusting speeds, feeds, and toolpath strategies to see if the issue can be solved without sacrificing cutting performance. Now that we've talked about indexable tools a bit, let's jump back into solid rounds. So another option that we have with tool geometry and solid round tools is variable indexing and unequal flute spacing. Unequal flute spacing disrupts those harmonic vibrations and stops them repeating, preventing resonance and chatter. These are highly effective in high-speed machining applications, keeping the tool engagement smooth and stable throughout the cut. Now let's talk a little bit about neck relief and like a reduced shank design. Neck relief minimizes tool contact with the walls, such as deep pocketing, reducing vibration and build on. Right? We don't want that entire length of the tool rubbing if we're deep in the pocket or alongside. Yep. Yep. A reduced shank allows deeper cuts 
from that increased neck diameter, that increased rigidity, also making them ideal for extended reach application. The helix angle also plays a key part of chatter suppression. Higher helix angles such as 40 to 45 degrees can reduce radial cutting force while improving chip evacuation. This can help minimize chatter in aluminum and softer materials. Lower helix angles, 30 to 35, provide stronger cutting edges, reducing deflection in harder materials such as stainless and titanium. So let's jump back in, do things like corner radius and edge geometry a little bit for the indexable portion. That's very important too. A uh, larger corner radius spreads out the cutting forces and increases strength, which reduces like stress and improves the tool stability. But chamfered and honed cutting edges can also strengthen the tool, reducing vibration and aggressive cuts, right? They're not as grabby. Sharp edges are best for light finishing though, generally speaking, but they can also induce chatter or worsen chatter in unstable situations. Another critical part of the tool geometry is the flute design, which can affect chip evacuation. Mm, sure. Deep flute gullets with a high helix can improve chip evacuation, preventing chip recutting that can lead to chatter and tool damage. Polished flutes can reduce the friction and therefore chip buildup, especially in sticky materials like aluminum. Some roughing tools include chip breakers on the flutes, controlling the chip size and therefore reducing cutting forces. So Andy, you talked a little bit earlier about different programming strategies. Let's talk a little bit about adaptive tool pads. Consistent radial engagement prevents uh, force spikes in the cutter, right? That, that can trigger chatter in those harmonic vibrations. Strategies like tricoidal milling or dynamic milling um, optimize tool engagement. They keep it consistent, which balances those cutting loads. Those can improve tool life, right, from, from the tool not coming in and out of the material as much. And also you touched on variable helix and flute spacing, which can also help suppress vibration, making solid tools really well suited for adaptive milling techniques. Absolutely, yeah. Let's cover a few final takeaways to wrap things up. Chatter signals instability, and fixing it starts with the right setup and the right tool. Choosing the right tool and the correct geometry, whether that be an indexable or a solid round, covers the geometry, the rake angles, the flute design, and the coatings, which will help reduce that chatter before they start. Modifying edge prep, as we mentioned earlier, should only be used as a last resort. A few key strategies for both indexable and solid round tools. We want to keep the setups rigid and minimize tool overhang. Try to adjust the feed rate, spindle speed, and radial engagement to avoid harmonics. Use adaptive tool pads to maintain stable cutting forces and optimize coolant to control heat and the chip evacuation. Again, indexable tools are great for roughing and high metal removal rates, while solid tools excel at finishing, high-speed machining, and adaptive milling. Chatter control is all about the full system. Adjusting one variable at a time will track improvements and help reduce that chatter in the overall system. Remember, small tweaks make a big difference. Thanks for joining us today on Tips and Chips. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. If you got any questions or tips that you'd like to share, please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you all. Need help? Visit the links in the description for more resources. And as always, keep those chips flying.